welcome, welcome. So we are blessed again tonight to have another missionary who's going to get to share with us. Um, last week we had Deneen Kelly, and this week we'll have Sharon Malcolm. And uh, Sharon is a missionary serving in the Amazon Basin in Peru. And uh, as a church, we've uh, uh, a, a recent short-term trip is returning. That was the fourth uh, team that's gone out uh, to serve with Sharon. And this March, uh, members of the church as well will we'll be going with her um, uh, to start a Bible school uh, to help her uh, start that there. So really looking forward to that. Um, and so, you know, what I request of you guys is as you're listening, just with open hearts and open ears, is, is it's just really been impressed upon me that, that we get to serve missionaries. You know, to just take a gander down on the cafe wall and look at that wall, right, and look at the missionaries that we support and uh, get to serve. And, you know, when you think about the commission of go therefore and make disciples, and disciples are learners. That takes time. And with that learning, who knows how long that's going to take and where the ministry will go. Uh, Wayne and Brooke Gorenson are uh, missionaries that uh, Calvary Aurora supports. And currently, um, I was very uh, taken by a letter that she wrote. Um, her husband, Wayne, um, was in an accident, and he's losing weight, and his, uh, his health is bad. And just listening and very humbled um, at her talking about you guys, um, her talking about the emails that she's received, the encouragement that she's received. And so her ministry currently is serving her husband. I'm um, serving her husband in a way that uh, just taking care of his health needs. And um, this verse comes to mind. It's, uh, it's Colossians uh, 4. Chapter 4, and uh, the last verse there, I had it and I lost it, I'm sorry. And it says, uh, uh, verse 17, 417, And say to Archippus, take heed to the ministry which you have received in the Lord, that you may fulfill it. And um, so with that said, um, th there's fruitful ministry, amazing ministry with Sharon um, in the Amazon Basin. And welcome, welcome Sharon as she gives us an update. Well, good evening to you. Um, it's always my pleasure to uh, have the opportunity to um, be here with you and share um, about the work in Peru. Um, I am so impressed with your church, with your, um, your call to missions, your heart for missions, and your dedication to missions. So it's truly my, my privilege to be a part of your, your missions outreach to the world. Um, that actually happened <coughs> um, about four years ago, uh, and it came through my brother Greg Malcolm, who's here with his wife Patty. He actually spoke to Dave Gordon, who was the former missions uh, overseer, and Dave came with a team about four years ago, and since then, I've been part of this world, worldwide missions outreach, so it's my greatest pleasure to be with you tonight. Um, I, work in, uh, I work with a small Peruvian team, and we go to visit and uh, minister to three Shawi Indian villages that are uh, only accessible by river, um, these villages have about 10 to 14 families, and it takes about 11 to 14 hours or so by boat to get there. We've been, I've been working with these villages for about eight years now, and um, just about eight years. There were no Christians when I first started. They didn't know who Jesus Christ is, who he, you know, what he's done for them and why it was important to them. But praise God, through the work of the Holy Spirit, there are many Christians now, and many of them have been water baptized. So glory to God. Um, if you would put up the first picture. Uh, what we do is we travel to these villages twice a month uh, uh, to minister, and I usually try and schedule a trip uh, during, um, during the Easter time. So we were um, to a village called Santa Rosa, during Good Friday. Now what they believe is the Catholics had been through these, these villages in the past, so they have some very basic or um, at least a, an awareness of a higher being and something about Jesus. What they believe 
is Jesus dies on Good Friday every year. And so all the evil spirits that are normally held at bay when Jesus is alive are now loosed. So to protect themselves from these evil spirits, they paint their faces like this. Usually it's the women and children that do this, not the men. And uh, they, I'm assuming they put markings around their face, their hands, wrist, feet, and ankles to protect those ports of entry, as, you, as it were. Um, so they do that on Good Friday. Uh, now, they believe that Jesus resurrects on Saturday, not Sunday. So on Saturday, the, since now Jesus is resurrected, all the spirits scatter and go back to their hiding place, wherever they were. But to make sure they do, the men take their hunting rifles and shoot several rounds into the air to scatter any spirits that are, you know, hanging around. Because we were there on Good Friday, um, I had the chance, we had the chance to see this firsthand. And so we were able to address some of these, um, these practices that they do. We said to them, um, you know, I explained to them that Jesus only died once. He died, the Bible says he died once for all. And when he came, he came to destroy the works of the, uh, works of the devil. So you, since you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you don't have to be afraid of these evil spirits anymore because the spirit of the living God now lives in you. And they were really listening. I could tell that they were listening. And as a result of our meeting, four of the people in this village wanted to get water baptized. They had accepted Christ already. And they asked me to, you know, that they could get water baptized. Even our boat driver wanted to get water baptized. So that was really good. You would flip to the next one. Um, along, and this is the baptism. I think that's our, water, our boat driver. <laughs> um, if you could, we, we did this in the river. Uh, flip to the next one, please. Um, what we do, uh, besides visiting the villages twice a month, we also do three-day trainings once a quarter. And we bring the villagers in from their, from their communities to the town where I live in, uh, which is Yorimagas. It's a rural town. And we have um, three days of intense training. So we have five sessions a day and an evening um, service at night. And this is to teach them and disciple them what prayer is, what praise is, their authority, and all different different um, tenets of the faith. In this scene, um, this pastor is a Shawi Indian pastor, and he was helping us minister. This is an evening service, a general service that he was ministering. Because he's a pastor and because he's Shawi, um, it really carried a lot of weight, what he said and the messages that he was bringing. If you would flip to the next one. Um, we also, and uh, I'm here with Maria sitting next to me, um, we were teaching during our sessions, we try and break the, um, the groups down into men, women, youth, and children. The purpose of that is so that every group will be able to receive the training at their level, at their speed. So Maria and I are here training the children um, about what praise is and how to praise. If you would flip to the next one. Um, and uh, along with visiting the villages uh, twice a month and doing the three-day uh, trainings, we also have we also host two to four short-term trips a year. So um, I had one earlier in the year in June, and uh, your church sent uh, an amazing team down in October. I was so impressed with this team. It was it was just off the charts. We ministered in another river that I work on that are um, Spanish communities. And in this particular um, village, there was a viable church. But in this church, as you know, there were varying levels of uh, development in their in their walk with the Lord. These churches are not um, like the caliber that you would experience here in this church. They're, they're much lower, I don't know how to say it, but they're much lower than what you would experience here. So they need a lot of discipleship, they need a lot of encouragement. And so um, we went there to do biosand water filters and that was to purify the, the water that they drink water right out of the river and it's very contaminated. We did these biosand water filters for this village um, to purify their water. But every night we had the opportunity to minister in the church and minister through um, preaching, praise, prayer, um, because we were, this team was so efficient, we got done with our biosand water filter project a day early, which I was really praying for. So we had the opportunity to minister um, to the children, doing a children's ministry in the afternoon. We had um, a soccer game, which some of, our, some of the guys on the team participated in, which really, really 
really bonded them with the team, with the um, people in the community. If anything will break down cultural and language barriers, a good game of soccer will do it. So, and it, and it really did. It really moved them right into the heart of the people. Um, if you would flip to the next one. Um, the team ministered in worship uh, in the evening. They all um, sang together. Uh, different ones preached and shared their testimonies. If you would flip to the next one. <clears throat> We did a uh, children's art um, project, which explained, it was a picture of a cross. It was like a, a book, a five-page book in the form of a cross. And each page um, explained the cross, you know, uh, Jesus' birth, his, his life, his death, his resurrection. Um, and so we put that all together. So the team was helping the children, uh, you know, after the lesson was given, put that together. It was a very meaningful time because the children by that time had really bonded with the team. The team, you know, a lot of them didn't speak Spanish, but it made no difference. The kids and the team were, were incredible with the, with the village. If you would flip to the next one. Um, this was an exciting point for me. After the team left in October, Maria and I, Maria is a Shawi missionary. She trained in Brazil to become a YWAM missionary and she's been working with me uh, for the last four years or so. Um, we went on the river again to minister to our villages, but um, I invited our three villages to do our first evangelistic outreach to one of their neighboring villages. And so um, I invited all three villages. Two of the three though had a fallout with that village so they didn't come, um, <clears throat> but the one village did, and we had three families represented from that one village. So we all went, and they went with the understanding that they were going to minister the gospel to this village, and that is just gigantic. So we got there, and um, these villages are not very big. They're 10 to 14 families. So um, these are the people um, seated that are waiting to receive the ministry, and some of the people that are standing in the far back are, are some of the people from these villages, they, from the village that I, that I invited. Um, they didn't do a whole lot because they were way out of their comfort zone, but the the fact that they came and um, helped, they did help, we did have a children's um, activity after the, the Bible lesson and they did help with that, um, was just a giant step forward. It was, it was just huge. Would you flip to the next one? Um, then in uh, the end of November, we had our last three-day training for the, for the year, and uh, this is Pastor Rocky again. He's teaching the people how to pray for the sick, but when he's teaching them, he's teaching them also how to revere God and honor God, not just, you know, you know spew out words and expect to see a result. It's to honor God, and so he has them kneeling in reverence to God. If you would flip to the last one. Um, Maria, who was, who was, as I said, was with me, also did some um, teaching on repentance and some other themes, and I was doing um, a, a teaching on how to share your faith. Um, it's really important for people to understand their faith thoroughly so that they'd be able to, to share it, and that is our goal. And as JJ commented, in the new year, um, we're going to bump this up uh, a step higher. Instead of three day trainings once a quarter, we're gonna have three week trainings once a quarter. It'll be a two year program and uh, the purpose is to raise up leaders, evangelists, evangelists and um, as God calls them, pastors, in order to take over the work and extend the work for when we can't get in there. We can only get into these villages when the river is high, but five months out of the year is the dry season, the water is very low, and we can't get in. So during those times, and throughout the year, of course, um, we want to establish firm um, church communities in these in these villages so i just want to thank you so so very much for all that you have done and all that you have partnered together with me to see this come about i mean truly this is our work that we have the privilege of you know participating in so i i just want to so thank you for all of the support all the teams um, all the prayers that have gone up uh, in behalf of the shawi people and this work God bless you all and thank you.